Battalion Landing Team 226, U.S. Marine Corps, Vietnam, 50-Year Remembrance. A Message of Remembrance by Monsignor John Cregan, Lieutenant Colonel, USMC, retired. Company E and its skipper, Captain John Cregan, had the misfortune of arriving back on LZ Margo from a combat patrol just as mortar rounds began to fall. His company was devastated. After retirement, he longed for another vocation of service, and he found that calling. As a Catholic priest, Monsignor Cregan has brought comfort and perspective to those whose lives were changed forever by Vietnam. Thank you very much, Al. Uh, it's always an honor to be with General Lynch, and each one of you guys have been an important part of my life, and uh, I think for all of us, we, we don't, as some years ago Al mentioned to me, we don't get, a, to get together a lot, and we don't maybe speak a lot, but we think about each other a lot and what we went through together, and it has really brought us together in a, in a very close bond. I'm going to start with some prayer, I'm going to have some scripture reading, and, and then I'll, I'll give some reflections, and then we'll wind up with prayer. So you can just be comfortable where you are. Let us pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, as we gather here to remember our fallen brothers, we remember that you promised to be with us always. May we this day feel your consolation and your presence. Renew and strengthen our faith that those who die still live in your presence. That our bodies do not perish in death, but are transformed by your power. Listen to our prayer and welcome our brothers into your heavenly kingdom. Raise them up on the last day and cleanse them of all sin. May they now and always experience the fullness of everlasting life and peace we ask this in, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And our first reading is from the Old Testament. It's uh, a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. And we have a, for a responsorial psalm, uh, we get to it again. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me. He refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. And we 
read from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw new heavens and a new earth. The former heavens and the former earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. I also saw a new Jerusalem, the holy city, coming down out of heaven from God, beautiful as a bride prepared to meet her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne cry out, This is God's dwelling among men. He shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and he shall be their God, who is always with them. He shall wipe every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or mourning, crying out or pain for the former world has passed away. The one who sat on the throne said to me, See, I make all things new. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To anyone who thirsts, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of life-giving water. He who wins the victory shall inherit these gifts. I will be his God, and he will be my son. The word of the Lord. Finally, we read from John's Gospel. Hearts be troubled. Have faith in God and faith in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. Otherwise, how could I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? I am indeed going to prepare a place for you. And then I shall come back to take you with me, that where I am, you also may be. You know the way that leads where I go. Lord, said Thomas, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Now, <clears throat> first of all, I want to just say that um, it is, again, wonderful to be here this weekend and to recall some difficult memories, but also some greatness. Uh, and I have to just share a little bit that <clears throat> this really tested an inspiration I had. It was a, a little maybe like Steve's voice, a little voice that's spoken to me. And, but <clears throat> I first came back from overseas in 1964. Uh, I was in a, on Okinawa and I came home. And then, of course, we got involved in a heavy way in Vietnam in 1965. And we kept asking and uh, requesting to go to Southeast Asia, but we had an overseas control day. So I had that, what I look at as valuable time, to really prepare myself, because my goal from that time when I came back <clears throat> was to be a rifle company commander in, in, in Vietnam. <clears throat> and so uh, I, I set up a game plan just personally for myself. I try to, in every way, spiritually, physically, professionally, to get in top shape. To, so when I went over, and I, I didn't want to uh, certainly make some stupid mistake and, and get Marines hurt or killed and, I, and uh, I was also in the background thinking about myself also that I, if I was going to get killed I didn't want it because I didn't know what I was doing so I really worked on that. Now I have to say my little voice, I don't know if I told the general about this, but shortly after I got to Vietnam I had, I just knew that, that I was going to get through that experience somehow. I, I, I just knew that my life was not going to end there. Now I have to say, LZ Margot really tested that inspiration <laughs> several times, and uh, but I, I did have this this feeling uh, that there was another part of my life that lay ahead, and so uh, and you know what ties us all together is we do have a future because of the Lord, and I was down in Peru and in. Uh, in uh, June for just a short mission mission trip down there. I had to visit the sick. And it was an old fella just sitting on a bench on the third floor in a shack and I went in to visit him and he looked up at me. He was terminally ill. We'd, we'd call it here, we'd be in hospice care, but his family was just taking care of him. He looked at me very peacefully and he said, 
Padre, I am here waiting to go to my father's house. What a great thought for each of us every time we get up in the morning. No matter what's going on in our life, we're here preparing to go to our father's house. And so what these readings are about is that God's about life. He's, he's, about, he's not about death. He, he, it's a God who gives us hope always. And he wants us to know that we have a future. That he will indeed, in the end, destroy death forever. And you know, it's just the simple truth that Jesus took on our humanity and he gave his life on Calvary Hill so that you and I could share God's life and God's love forever. So because of him we do have a future and we want to focus on that. He's placed in our hearts. Maybe it's a little voice that Steve heard too, but we all here have these inspirations, but within our hearts, every one of us here, every one of the Marines that we serve, Deep within their heart, there was a longing for something more than this world can give. A longing for a life without end. A longing for a fulfillment beyond all their desires. That's deep within every one of our hearts. And Jesus came, as he tells us, to prepare a place for you and me and for all people. He says that it's his desire that where he is, that, that he wants us with him. And I would say to you, make that effort in your life. Wherever you are with God, with faith, with church, make that effort to come close to the Lord. Just ask for his help for a deeper faith. Feel his presence with you. So in the midst of all the down moments and the darkness, you'll have a little bit of heaven right here but you'll know with more certainty that we are on a journey and it's going to end in a place. And Paul tells us about that place in one of his letters. He said, no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard, no mind has come close to comprehending the awesomeness of this place. And for me and for all of us, I think we gather here and again we commend our brothers to this wonderful place where they experience the fullness of beauty and goodness and peace and it never, never ends. That's the reality of our God. The whole scripture is summed up by St. John in three words. God is love. And yes, we love one, one another. And we expressed it often in a manly way. But what we did was to show our deep love for our brothers. And uh, so we want to thank God for this great future that we have. You know, in the greatest trials of our life, we want to pray for a certain and a constant hope that the Lord's love is working even through the darkness and even through the struggles. And he's drawing us and he's calling us every day to be always faithful. We seek every day to grow in love. That's that willingness. And I've heard it so many times this weekend. It's a willingness to give of ourselves, to enhance and protect, protect the lives of others. I, I was reading some of the accounts, and it, often it came up, to run onto an assisted Marine under heavy fire, and then when more rounds came in, to shield that Marine with, or corpsman with your own body. What a, that, that's deep, powerful giving of yourself for somebody else. And that's what the Marine Corps is all about for me. Uh, and, and we witness this type in so many ways on Margo. And I do remember that dark night of the 15th when I crawled up next to Bull Durham and whispered in his ear. And he was looking down the barrel of his machine gun with such calmness and with such strength. And I see these pictures here, and it's not easy, as all you guys know, to lay out in that jungle and listen for every twig to crack and know that death is around us and yet to be calm and strong in those situations. It, it, it's an image that I have 
it, it's been with me ever since we left. And uh, so I, I read several accounts, and, and uh, it brings it back so clearly to me. I was behind uh, the squad that where Stan Pettit was killed, and where uh, Corporal Dumas was wounded, and then a wonderful young Marine named Joe Robo ran up to lay down fire so they could get to the bodies of those Marines to get Stan Pettit out. He didn't know he was dead. And, and it went on for quite a while. As I remember, I think it was about 90 minutes before we got to those Marines and, and, were, uh, and were able to get them back. But just to watch is the activities and things happened on LZ Margo. Catastrophe. It was unbelievable violence. And, and uh, uh, someone mentioned people, uh, I think Dale Whitworth mentioned people crying out all over the place for help and for Corman. And yet, Marines getting up and moving out and going to where they were needed and doing whatever they could to bring comfort and to bring life to their buddies. So we seek every day of our life to grow in this kind of love, to give of ourselves and to be able uh, to see that we're here to live for others. So what we witnessed in the end on Margo was so many examples of other directed, unselfish, sacrificial, heroic love. Many times the willingness to risk absolutely everything in the face of exploding death, to go to the wounded, a wounded brother. And I think what sums it up for me is, and you, many of you have already heard this letter, but I, I think this sums up what we're about and the greatness of the Marines that were there on Margo and the Marines that served in Vietnam and that still serve. When Joe Robo was killed at Margo on the 16th, some weeks later, I can't remember where we were, and I, we didn't often get mail, but I got a letter from, from Lance Corporal Robo's mother, and uh, in it she included the last letter that Joe had written home. He, he uh, came from Pennsylvania, he had three brothers, and he had four sisters. And, uh, so he wrote a letter, and also some people in the community had sent a lot of things like dry socks and uh, foot powder, things that were very, very important to us. And uh, actually, we got this, these big packages, and, and it kept my uh, company combat effective because we had so many guys with really bad feet and, uh, as a result of the, of the, of the water. Uh, and, uh, and so. But anyway, he, he thanked people in the, in the town for what they had sent and for their greetings and their concerns. And then he, he's writing this to his mom. He said, when I came over here in November, it was because I wanted to play John Wayne for a while and also to get some first-hand knowledge of how the war was going for us. That seems a long time ago. I've grown up quite a bit since then. I kept wondering if we were doing any good by being here, and are we the ones that should do, be doing this job? I say yes to both questions. Why shouldn't we do the job? We're the best equipped to do it, and it is a job that has to be done. If we quit now, the only ones who will gain anything are the communists. About two weeks ago, I picked up a personal reason for fighting. I was on a convoy going back to my outfit, and I saw this little boy standing alongside the road. For some reason, he reminded me a lot of Billy. Billy was Joe's four-year-old brother at the time. For a while, I just thought and stared. Then I said to myself, why shouldn't he have the same rights and privileges that Billy has? And I am prepared to give my life seeing that he has those rights. So if anything happens to me over here, I don't want a lot of crying and blaming someone for my being here. I want to be here. I would much rather that you be proud that I died for a worthwhile cause that I understand and firmly believe in. 
it was, I have read that letter so many times to people and uh, when I came back and there were so many questions about the war and I was asked one time to uh, speak on the steps of City Hall at New Rochelle, New York. I was an I&I &I in New Rochelle and, and I read this letter and uh, several other things and uh, three police officers, all Marine Reservists, said, will you come with me, uh, Major? And I, so I went with them. They took me down to the desk sergeant and they said, I, we want to <coughs> report this Marine Major for inciting a riot on the City Hall steps of New Rochelle. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I said that, I was looking at, uh, at 25 or maybe 50 anti-war um, uh, protesters and one of them had a sign, Marines kill babies, and that just got me a little fired up. And so, But Joe Robles' message was one that I read when people didn't understand, and they should have understood better. But when General Lynch called me up and asked me to present, 20 years ago now, the, the post-humanist Bronze Star to uh, Joe Robles' mom, we had that wonderful ceremony at Arlington Cemetery. And this has been a, a lesson that I've uh, repeated to a lot of people. We need second chances in life. We all do. So Mrs. Rowell, after the award, she just stood over on the side with me, and she looked at me. Just to, to me, I found making casualty calls that that was the strength of America, the love that comes from a mother's heart. I'm not knocking that, but the love that comes from a mother's heart was more powerful than all the bombs and all the weapons in the world. And this strong mother, she looked at me and said, you know, Father, Joe so wanted to be a Marine, and they turned him down four times. I said, well, Mrs. Roble, we're very lucky we took him the fifth time because he was an outstanding Marine. We remember it him who lifted up our spirits with his joy and so importantly with his courage and uh, so you know we don't know how much time we have life is short and we're here this weekend this wonderful weekend to remember a very important part of our life and if we remember one thing we cannot change we can't change the past gone. We don't know what the future holds, but we have today. And we have today to be always faithful, to be what God calls us to be, to, you know, to remember when we raised our hand and took that oath of enlistment that we solemnly swore to support and defend all that was best about our country. We were literally putting our life on the line for other people. Now, sometimes we didn't really think about it that way, maybe, but that's the reality. We were putting our life on the line and saying, we'll stand, we'll rise up and stand in the face of evil and acts of terror. We'll always be there to stand against evil in the world. 